Oh, yes, your majesty. He's out there in the garden now. Is he indeed? The queen said. The sheer absurdity of it all was helping her to regain her composure. So he's in the garden, is he? She said, smiling a little. He's a good giant, your majesty. You need not be frightened of him. I'm delighted to hear it, the queen said, still smiling. He's my best friend, your majesty. Hmm, how nice. He's a lovely giant, your majesty. I'm quite sure he is, the queen said. But why have you and this giant come to see me? I think you've dreamed that part of it too, your majesty, Sophie said calmly. Ooh, that pulled the queen up short, took the smile right off her face. She certainly had dreamed that part of it. She was remembering now how, at the end of her dream, it had said that a little girl and a big friendly giant would come and show her how to find the nine horrible man-eating giants. Be careful, the queen told herself. Keep very calm, because this is surely not far from the place where madness begins. You did dream that, didn't you, your majesty? Well, the maid was out of it now. She just stood there goggling. Yes, the queen murmured. Yes, now you come to mention it, I did. But how do you know what I dreamed? Oh, that's a long story, your majesty, Sophie said. Would you like me to call the big friendly giant? The queen looked at the child. The child looked straight back at the queen, her face open and quite serious. The queen simply didn't know what to make of it. Was someone pulling her leg? She wondered. Shall I call him for you? Sophie said. You'll like him very much. The queen took a deep breath. She was glad no one except her faithful old Mary was here to see what was going on. Very well, she said. You may call your giant. Oh, no, wait a moment. Mary, pull yourself together and give me my robe and slippers. The maid did as she was told. The queen got out of bed and put on a pale pink dressing gown and slippers. You may call him now, the queen said. Sophie turned her head toward the garden and called out, BFG! Her Majesty the Queen would like to see you. The Queen crossed over to the window and stood beside Sophie. Oh, come down off that ledge, she said. You're going to fall backward any moment. Sophie jumped down into the room and stood beside the Queen at the open window. Mary, the maid, stood behind them. Her hands were now planted firmly on her hips, and there was a look on her face which seemed to say, I want no part of this fiasco. I don't see any giant, the Queen said. Please wait. Sophie said. Shall I take her away now, ma'am? The maid said. Well, take her downstairs and give her some breakfast, the queen said. And just then, there was a rustle in the bushes behind the lake. Then, out he came. Twenty-four feet tall, wearing his black cloak with the grace of a nobleman, still carrying his long trumpet in one hand, he strode magnificently across the palace lawn toward the window. The maid screamed. The queen <gasps> gasped. Sophie waved. The BFG took his time. He was very dignified in his approach. When he was close to the window where the three of them were standing, he stopped and made a slow, graceful bow. His head, after he had straightened up again, was almost exactly level with the watchers at the window. Your Majesty, he said, I is your humbug servant. He bowed again. Considering she was meeting a giant for the first time in her life, the queen remained astonishingly self-composed. We are very pleased to meet you, she said. Down below, a gardener was coming across the lawn with a wheelbarrow. He caught sight of the BFG's legs over to his left. His gaze traveled slowly up the entire height of the enormous body. He gripped the handles of the wheelbarrow. He swayed, he tottered, and then he keeled over in the grass in a dead faint. Nobody noticed him. Oh, Magister, cried the BFG. Oh, Queen, oh, Monica, oh, Golden Sovereign, oh, Ruler, oh, Ruler of Straight Lines, oh, Satana, I has come here with my little friend Sophie to give you a... Uh, the BFG hesitated, searching for the word. To give me what? The Queen said. 
assistance, the BFG said, beaming. The queen looked puzzled. He sometimes speaks a bit funny, your majesty, Sophie said. He never went to school. Then we must send him to school, the queen said. We have some very good schools in this country. I have great secrets to tell your majesty, the BFG said. I should be delighted to hear them, the queen said, but not in my dressing gown. Shall you wish to get dressed, ma'am, the maid said. Have either of you had breakfast, the queen said. Oh, could we? Sophie cried. Oh, please, I haven't eaten a thing since yesterday. I was about to have mine, the queen said, but Mary dropped it. The maid gulped. I imagine we have more food in the palace, the queen said, speaking to the BFG. Perhaps you and your little friend would care to join me. Will it be repulsing snorth cumbers, your majesty? The BFG asked. Will it be what? The queen said. Stanky snooze cumbers, the BFG said. What is he talking about? The queen said. Sounds like a rude word to me. She turned to the maid and said, Mary, ask them to serve breakfast for three in the... I think it had better be the ballroom. That has the highest ceiling. To the BFG, she said, I'm afraid you'll have to go through the door on your hands and knees. I shall send someone to show you the way. The BFG reached up and lifted Sophie out of the window. You and I is leaving her majesty alone to get dressed, he said. Oh no, leave the little girl with me, the queen said. We'll have to find something for her to put on. She can't have breakfast in her nighty. Can we have sausages, your majesty, Sophie said, and bacon and fried eggs? I think that might be arranged, the queen answered, smiling. Oh, just wait till you taste it, Sophie said to the BFG. No more snowscumbers from now on.